Welcome to RK Tutorials, Solutions to Engineering Mechanics by S. Timoshenko, 5th edition. In this tutorial, we will discuss problem set 2.7 and problem number 2.109. Two blocks of weights W1 and W2 are rest on a rough inclined plane and are connected by a short piece of string as shown in the figure. If the coefficient of frictions are mu1 is 0.2 and mu2 is 0.3 respectively, Find the angle of inclination of the plane for which sliding will impend. W1, W2 values are given as 22.25 newtons. Now, the problem is self-explanatory. I would like to find the value of alpha such that the sliding will just will impend. And the coefficient of frictions, here it is 0.2 and here it is 0.3. Now let us draw the free body diagrams for W1 and W2 both. First let us draw the free body diagram for W2. Now the various forces acting on W2 is the self weight and there is a normal reaction, there is a frictional force and a tension in the string. Now clearly we can see there is normal reaction, let that normal reaction is N2 and the frictional force is mu into N and mu value is given as 0 0.3, so 0 0.3 into N2 and there is a tension in the string T and of course the self weight W2. Let us transfer all those forces into separate XY plane. So I will find W2 is a downwards direction and 0.3 into N2 along this one and tension T to our collinear in fact both are acting in the same line and next one the reaction force that is N2. Given that now let us find the angle. Now here you can see this these two forces are parallel to the inclined plane and N2 is perpendicular to the inclined plane. W2 is the only force which is vertical force. So instead of taking my X and Y axis are parallel like this, what I will do is I will consider my X axis is parallel to the plane and Y axis is perpendicular to the plane so that I need to resolve only W2, all these three forces I need not to resolve. Now you know this value is given as alpha, hence this value becomes 90 minus alpha. So what I will do is I will resolve this W2 parallel to the surface and perpendicular to the surface. Now look at this. So I will consider this axis, I will consider this axis is my x axis and this axis I will consider my y axis. Now the forces acting along x axis or y axis you know from this diagram. So along x axis it is point through n2 and it is t and then along y axis it is n2. Now this w2 I will resolve one is parallel to this x axis and perpendicular to this x axis that is y axis. So after resolving you can see it is w2 into cos 90 minus alpha because this angle is 90 minus alpha and this vertical component is w2 sin 90 minus alpha. So this cos 90 minus alpha becomes it becomes sin alpha and sin 90 minus alpha becomes cos alpha. So instead of doing this x and y axis like this I am just if you consider uh, this as your x and y axis, then you need to resolve all these three forces along x and y axis. Just by considering your x and y axis is like this, if you can resolve only w2, then that will be sufficient. So thereby you can reduce the number of steps in the problem. Now I will apply the equilibrium equation sigma fx is equal to 0. There are three forces and I will consider this is my positive x axis and this is my positive y axis. Hence you can see 0.3 and 2 is equal to w plus w2 into sin alpha. Let us say this is equation number 1 and then sigma of y is equal to 0 and there are only two forces. Hence I can say n2 is equal to w cos alpha given that w2 value is given as 22.25 so then I got the N2 is equal to 22.25 cos alpha. Now I can substitute back from equation 1. You can say 0 0.3 into 22.25 cos alpha is equal to T plus W2 value is 22.25 into sin alpha. Now from that I can find the value of T and the T value is 22.25 into 0.3 cos alpha minus sin alpha. Now let us draw the free body diagram of W1. W1 look like this. The various forces, of course, the first force is the re, uh, normal reaction that is N1 
the frictional force it is 0.2 n1 because mu1 value is given as 0.2 and there is a self weight w1 in addition to that there is a string force t so let us transfer all those forces onto an xy plane so it is of course it is w1 and it is 0.2 n1 like this and then t is also acting in the same direction okay n1 is perpendicular to this and then t is this one now once again if you observe there are three forces acting uh, along this one and perpendicular to this this one and there is only one force which is not acting this one so in this problem also i will consider this is my x axis and this is my y axis so that if i can resolve this w1 then that will be sufficient so for that i required the angle made by w1 with either this axis now you know this axis this angle is 90 minus alpha so i can resolve my w1 like this and like this now this is my new x axis now the forces are point to n1 and t and the y axis that is n1 now i let us come to w1 w1 the x axis component w1 cos 90 minus alpha y axis component w1 sin 90 minus alpha so this is my the total forces after resolution then i will apply sigma fx0 and sigma fy0 i will consider this is my positive x axis and this is the positive now so point to n1 plus t is equal to w1 into sin alpha that is equation number 4 and sigma fy is equal to 0 you can say n1 is equal to w1 into cos alpha but you know w1 is equal to 22.25 hence n1 is equal to 22.25 into cos alpha you can substitute back you also know the value of t so point 2 into n1 value is 22.25 cos alpha plus t is equal to 22.25 into sin alpha from that i can find the value of t now from equation 3 uh, I have got one more equation for t. I will equate both from equation three and six. Both I, uh, both the equations gives only the t. Then I will equate that. So 22.25 sin alpha minus 0.2 cos alpha is equal to 22.25 into 0.3 cos alpha minus sin alpha. And you can simplify very easily because there is only one equation and there is only one unknown. So after simplification, you will get to 2 sin alpha is equal to 0.5 into cos alpha that you can convert into tan alpha is equal to 0.25 and hence alpha is equal to 14.04 degrees. So this is the answer for the given problem.